Peter Sunday is the founder of Pirate Bay, and he is an individual who has spent five months in jail because of his involvement with the company. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Pirate Bay, it's essentially a resource you can use to pirate <laughs> material, okay? And that's part of the reason why Peter Sunday spent some time in jail. Now, with that said, he was recently speaking to CNBC. Um, it was a CNBC, uh, it was a conference in Amsterdam where CNBC was interviewing him. And he said some really interesting things about Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. He says, Facebook is the biggest nation in the world, and we have a dictator. If you look at it from a democracy standpoint, Mark Zuckerberg is a dictator. I did not elect him. He sets the rules. So when he first said that, I kind of, I was taken aback. I'm like, where, where is this guy coming from? Like, what do you mean he's a dictator? I don't feel like Mark Zuckerberg dictates my life. But then as he continued, I realized Peter Sunday had a point. He says, uh, you can't opt out of Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, but there are a lot of drawbacks in my offline world. No party invitations, no updates from my friends. People stop talking to you because you're not on Facebook. So it has real life implications. Uh, he even says, we send major leaders of Europe to ask him to stop interfering with our local culture. How did we end up in a situation like this? Okay, so I think he actually does make a good point. And some of you might think that this is just a frivolous thing. Who cares if you're not getting the party invitations? Who cares if people that are supposed to be your friends stop talking to you because you're not on social uh, media? It does sound like he's whining a little bit. It does sound like he's whining but, a little bit, but there is a lot of honesty and truth to what he's yes. saying. Um, I think that we, especially in the United States, are so overwhelmed in our culture of productivity that we now use social media as a way to connect with people instead of meeting with people face to face. And whether you like it or not, a lot of people have resorted to that. And it's become increasingly difficult to get people to meet with you instead of, you know, do the easy faux friend thing of liking shit that you post on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. At least that's what my experience has been. Also, a lot of people do use Facebook to send invites for everything, including their weddings, which I've experienced even though, recently. Even though I feel like a Facebook RSVP is essentially meaningless, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you RSVP to everything, by the way. I, of course, because I want to show my support. I, I'm like, hey, maybe I'll go. I don't know if I will, <laughs> but look. Um, yes, Peter does bring up a lot of ironically good points, especially because uh, someone like him criticizing mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is interesting because of his involvement with Pirate Bay, yep. a really important tool for uh, for the online community. I love it. I, I will be honest about it. Please don't sue me. Anyway, um, but look, he's not even he's not even scratching the surface of how devastatingly powerful Facebook is. Yeah. Now. We've talked about this in the past on the show as well, where we uh, were, I think we covered it here, uh, where we talked about Facebook um, manipulating the news that you see uh, and sometimes skewing a little bit towards the liberal publications. It turned out that it wasn't true. Facebook released all the documentation that showed some uh, important truths, uh, most importantly uh, being that it is not dictated by an algorithm like we had previously thought, but actually dictated by real humans. Yeah. Now, um, this is incredibly important because Facebook potentially has the ability to change human feelings, to swing an election. Yes, it And does. what's really scary is that it's protected by the Constitution. Under the First Amendment, Facebook, a, pri like a, a private organization, it technically could operate as a media company like it does right now mm -hmm. and show you whatever it wants to show you. And yes, the people might go out and say, I, I can't believe Facebook is doing this, but they are completely protected in doing so if they wanted to. Yeah. Now, then in that sense, then we can possibly vote with our you know eyeballs or vote with our usership and possibly move away from using Facebook. But just like Peter mentioned, because everyone is using Facebook, it ruins and has real life implications on how it does. you live in the real world. So you just mentioned, um, you reminded me of two issues that have come up regarding not only Facebook, but social media in general. First of all, uh, your point about Facebook having the ability to swing an election is excellent because you see it all the time. There is understandably a distrust of conventional media, of cable news media in the US, 
And so, or establishment media. And so as a result, I think more and more people are resorting to digital media or online sources of news. A lot of people are busy and they, they have to worry about putting food on the table for their kids and their families. And so as a result, the news that they consume is what they see posted on Facebook. And there is a lot of misinformation posted on there. And we did cover the story about how the trending news stories that Facebook posts aren't necessarily based on an algorithm um, involving what the popular stories of the day are, there are curators who make decisions about which stories you see and which stories you don't see. So that's problematic. Another thing that I find problematic is that now your worth as a person for various companies is based on how big your following is. And yeah. it, it's not only for those who are working in news media. I see it happening all over the place. If you want to be an actor or actress, you're trying to break into that field. The first thing that casting directors look into is whether or not you have a large following. There are actual seminars and classes on how to build your following in order to have a more successful career. So when your life is dictated that way based on how big your following is on social media, it kind of coerces you or forces you into having these accounts. And I think it kind of sucks because there are definitely- I don't have that big of an issue with that. You're unbearable though, because Haas, all no. I hear Haas talking about at work is like, oh my God, like Anna, like what do you do? I need to stop okay, don't, imitating don't, you like that. I know. What I know. do I need to do to like get a bigger following on Instagram? You look, know? look, I already, I already take the necessary steps to get a bigger following on Instagram. You guys definitely follow me on Instagram at Hassan Mahone if you want to see that. <laughs> but um, look, I think that that is just a new reality. And I think that people that are growing up with social media, the younger generations, mm -hmm. even millennials, are completely accustomed to that. And it's not necessarily going to be a, a, a problem for them at all. Mm -hmm. They just know how to operate in this new world. This is a tool that they can use to either their advantage or to, the, to a tool that'll be a disadvantage for them if they don't know how to use it. It's like using a remote. Basically. So let me show you another disadvantage. Um, so recently in Utah, there was an apartment complex that essentially attempted to force its residents to A, have a Facebook account, and B, like the apartment complex's page on Facebook. So tenants at City Park Apartments in Salt Lake City spoke out against the policy after finding a Facebook addendum taped to their doors last Thursday. Those who did not like the complex within five days of signing their lease would be found in breach <laughs> of the agreement. So uh, they were also told that they could not post negative things about the apartment complex on social media. And of course, the residents were not pleased by this, and so there was a huge brouhaha about it. And um, then the apartment complex decided to send a letter saying like, oh, no, 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 this, this went way further than we ex intended for it to, and it's non-binding, everybody chill out, like us on Yelp, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So, I mean, it does have, Facebook, social media, all of this does have some negative impacts on society, and I'm just, you know, trying to point that out. I, it's funny, because this is the least indecent thing you hear landlords doing. Like, when you think yeah. about it, um, there are, uh, like, as tenants, we have a lot of laws that protect us. And I feel like landlords take advantage of our misinformation or the fact that we're not educated on those laws. Like, and, and this is such a minor instance. Like, it's mm -hmm. such a minor incident. It's not a big deal. It's obviously some like older landlord who was like, this social media thing is important. Like, <laughs> you should like us on Facebook. I can yeah. force you, I'm a landlord. And then it blew up on social media because he had no idea it would, but Yep. That's the reality of social media. We can connect with one another and expose people like this now. And um, I mean, but I'm just going to educate a few folks here. If you have an apartment complex, and unless it's previously agreed in the, in the lease, that uh, your landlord has some basic things that they need to provide for you. Mm -hmm. One of the most important ones being your AC or leaky pipes, things of that nature. If they do not come in and fix those after you make a request, in some states, you have the right to withhold rent. Yeah, okay, so look, those types of laws vary state by state. So yes. obviously know your rights depending on the state that you live in. Um, but now we're kind of off on a tangent. But I, you do bring <laughs> up an interesting point. I'm just saying landlords are indecent. No, <laughs> Sometimes. they're not indecent. Sometimes. My dad's a landlord. Your, your dad's your, a landlord. Your grandpa's My grandfather's a landlord. landlord. They're yeah. great. Some are not.